Orion star constellation is the very ancient star constellation identified by man. Even the Giza pyramids were built aligned with the central three stars of the Orion constellation. This video analyzes the facts on this all important constellation and identifies what it represents and how its name evolved. Just like the Orion constellation is seemingly associated with Egypt, the much used eye symbol of the Illuminati is also seemingly associated with Egypt. When I am discussing Orion, why should I be referring to the eye symbol of the Illuminati? I am mentioning it because they are intimately related and you would know it soon. The Illuminati are the destroyers of the humanity who always possess sinister designs for the humanity. That means the mythology behind the eye symbol should be equally sinister. As per the Egyptian mythology, the god Ra of Egypt feels that humanity is plotting against him. Hence, he creates a goddess called Eye of Ra as a bloodthirsty goddess. It goes on destroying humanity and at one point Ra feels that if not stopped, she will destroy entire humanity. Hence, Ra arranges to dye beer with red color and sprinkles all over the land and Eye of Ra drinks the beer mistaking it for blood and gets inebriated and comes back to Ra. It is this eye symbol which is called Eye of Ra that the Illuminati chose as a symbol as it is a bloodthirsty goddess. Hence, the Eye of Illuminati is obviously spying, controlling and governing the global population as per its own whims and fancies. But unfortunately, the Illuminati are mistaken that the chosen eye is not the Eye of Ra. It is actually the Eye of Siva, the first Siddha of the world. It is not the physical eye. It is the Eye of Wisdom called Mind's Eye, also called as a third eye. And it enlightens a person possessing it and guides other people towards betterment and it is never ever destructive. I have said that the Illuminati eye is the eye of Shiva. Do we then have a god in Egyptian mythology who represents Shiva? Yes, he is called Horus. Truly, the eye of Illuminati is actually the eye of Horus only. When I decipher the origin of Orion, you would know that the Horus is the Egyptian counterpart of Shiva of Tamils. The Egyptian mythology associates eye with the three gods. They are 1. Horus, 2. The green goddess called Vajet, and 3. The god Ra. The god Ra of Egypt is a male god, but the eye of Ra is female and its character and mythology exactly matches with Kali, the Tamil goddess. For instance, Kali goes on rampage and destroys everything on her way. Realizing the destructive potential of Kali, Shiva lies down on her path and when Kali steps on Shiva, she comes back to her senses and calms down. This mythology should have been created by ancient Indo-Arya Brahmins of India. In Tamil, the word Ra means darkness and Kali is a god of darkness and hence was considered by a group of people, including the Jews, as god of black magic and we know that Zion is Jews are the occult people and the Illuminati. Hence, god Ra is not a male and the ancient Egyptians misconceived it and I of Ra is nothing but Ra itself. Now, considering Ra as female and likening it to Kali and equating the green goddess Vajit with the Pachyama called also as Madurai Meenakshi and equating Horus with Shiva, don't you get an important point here? We know that Madurai Meenakshi, the green goddess, is associated with Shiva and Kali, the black goddess, is also associated with Shiva. But only Shiva is having third eye as he was a human Siddha and Pachyama and Kali are symbolic deities and they do not have the third eye as per Tamil concept. The third eye is an earned eye, which is nothing but the activated pineal gland, activated through intense yoga by human Siddha, and hence it is never associated with the symbolic deities. Hence, in Egyptian mythology also, the eye should not be associated with Vajet, the green goddess, and Ra, the black goddess. This is a basic misconception of the Egyptians and the Egyptologists. They call Ra as male and as a solar deity. They mistake the red disc on their head for the solar disc. But the disc is actually a Kundalini Chakra, most probably the heart chakra. The snake surrounding the disc represents Kundalini power, which is represented by dual snakes as shown in the Caduceus. The Kundalini Yoga and the Caduceus symbol originated from ancient Tamil country and it is often seen sandwiching the god Vinayaka of Tamils. The Tamil god Vinayaka collectively represents all Siddhas who attained Nirvana through Yoga. The snake on the forehead of pharaohs is kundalini snakes only as ancient pharaohs were saints that is Siddhas like Ravana the ancient king of Lanka, Dalai Lama the king in exile of Tibet etc. All the kings of the ancient world were Siddhas that includes even Siva and Muruga. Hence 
the discs on the heads of the egyptian deities are not solar days but kundalini chakras only we know that the kundalini chakras represent the glands of the body just observe one of the representations of horus his headdress represents two items the red colored one is called womb where kundalini actually resides the bottle like white item represents thymus glands associated with the heart chakra when you see a boy or a man you see a kind of a, a bottle on his head that is uh, not a bottle or not a, a white crown symbolizing upper egypt as my colleagues and, and and the scholars say no this is a gland in the human body known as the thymus located behind the lungs the thymus is most active when a baby is in utero it continues to be active until puberty then it begins to shrink and is atrophied when we stop being fertile it was a critical activator of consciousness the red crown is another it's the womb the placenta the thymus and the womb are connected for the cycle of life when you see the double crown the red crown is the womb and the placenta the white crown is the thymus who has its influence on the womb that's the symbol of one of the glands kindly observe the headdress of the white god osiris it also represents thymus gland the headdress of the god amen is also thymus gland this became the headdress of the popes of the vatican hence many in egyptian gods called as solar deities were actually not solar deities the only solar deities of egypt are atum and aten which are one and the same and atum is a deformed form of aten according to egyptian mythology atum gives rise to tefnut the god of rain and shu the god of wind and hence atum was originally the sun god as well as aten in tamil aden means sun aden of tamil became aten of egypt if you are still skeptical about the influence of ancient tamil culture on egyptians kindly watch the video clipping these three giza pyramids represent shiva the black and small pyramid vishnu red and intermediate pyramid and brahma the white and large pyramid just compare it with the color concept of asivaham it reflects the reduced color concept of asivaham as it can be correlated with the three linga images of gajaguba of bali island of indonesia As a further proof on the influence of Osivaham on Egypt, the green goddess Vajad is associated with six other goddesses called Hathor, Sekhmet, Tafnet, Bast, Mut, and Nikbet. The set of seven goddesses are nothing but the Saptakani concept of Tamils. If you are not convinced that these Egyptian goddesses are related to Saptakanis, kindly observe the seven snakes found on the walls of the Egyptian temples. In Tamil Nadu, Saptakannis are represented by seven-headed snake as shown here. The Saptakannis of Tamils are more than 10,000 year old concepts and these are part of Indus civilization also. The purpose of this video is to detail the origin of Orion constellation along with its name. However, when I set out to search related material, I was really astonished on the level of misconception even among the Egyptologists. The misconception is arising from the perspective through which the Egyptologists approached Egyptology. Had it been approached through Tamil perspective, the reconstruction of the Egyptian cultural history would have been a breeze. This would be positively established by this video. Hence, the eye symbol of the Egypt originally belongs to Horus only and it was called Eye of Horus. The ancient Egyptians knew its true meaning and it was during the later ages that the strange mythologies related to Horus, Osiris and Set etc. originated and hence the above said evil meanings of the eye. This fact is derivable from the picture shown. The eye symbol of the Egypt was detected from a structure in the region of the brain which includes thalamus, pineal gland, pituitary gland, etc. The ancient Egyptians knew the role of pineal gland that it is associated with the higher consciousness and the cosmic wisdom. However, the mythologies that came about during the later times associate this eye only with royal power and these mythologies do not expose the wisdom aspect of this eye at all. and this is pathetic this misconception would have arisen from the name paro which is the general name of the king of egypt the name paro evolved out of tamil word called par which means sea literally 
but it means figuratively take care of or govern in Tamil. Hence, the governing king is called Paro, which is a word of Tamil origin. Even the word parliament, name of the body that governs a country, is of Tamil origin. Since par meaning C is associated with I, the organ of visual perception, the Egyptians wrongly associated the wisdom of the Horus, that is Shiva, with the governance and paro, and the royal power was related to the god of darkness called Ra, who actually represents Kali. Kali is the black goddess. The preferred color of Jews is black, the color of Kali. The weekly day of worship of the Jews is Saturday. Saturday is linked to the planet Saturn, the female deity of which is Kali. Hence, the ancient Jews were originally Tamils and they worshipped Kali. Being Kali worshippers, the Illuminati of today are using the misconceived idea of the I as justification for their sinister designs. Had the continuity of the original ideas been preserved in Egypt, this travesty would have never happened. I am tempted to think that even the misconception about the I itself might have been engineered by the ancient Jews of Egypt that they should have purposefully associated the I with Kali to justify their engagement in occult practices. As per Tamil culture, Kali is a low-level deity and she is a war goddess meant just to infuse bravery into their worshippers, preparing them for war in times of need. As per Tamil culture, war is the result of ignorance of either or both the warring parties. Hence, Kali might represent ignorance rather than wisdom. The goddess of wisdom is Saraswati, who was held in high esteem as per ancient Tamil customs. Hence, Kali shall never be associated with the eye, which was the eye of Shiva, and it never represents destruction. Hence, the exodus of Jews from the ancient Egypt should be approached through a different perspective than that is articulated so far. At this point, a clarification is needed. The third eye of Shiva being related to destructive fire in Indian mythology is an intentional distortion introduced by the indo arya Brahmins of India and it would be discussed more in Kundalini video to be published. Now coming back to Horus, what is shown is the image of Horus. He is depicted with a falcon head. Black falcon or crow is the Vahana of Saniswara, the Shiva, the deity of Saturn as shown in the figure. Shiva stands for duality. When he assumes female aspect, he represents black and hence his carrier becomes a black falcon or crow. When he assumes male aspect, he is depicted white and he is even related to sun in ancient times. Consider yin yang of Chinese and it represents abstract form of Shiva, the lingam. As Horus is actually Shiva, the falcon or crow, which was originally the Vahana of black aspect of Shiva, is appended to a human body to represent Horus of Egypt. Egyptian gods do not have Vahana like that of the gods in India. But the head of Vahana of Tamil god becomes the head itself of the Egyptian god counterpart. Likewise, the lion-headed goddess Sekhmet also represents Kali or Parvati, who has lion as a Vahana in Tamil belief. The disc on the head of Horus is also a Kundalini Chakra along with the Kundalini Serpents. We have established through the eye of Horus and his falcon-headed picturization that the Horus of Egypt represents Shiva of Tamils. We shall now establish that the very name of Horus was derived out of one of the Tamil names of Shiva. We shall show it how in the following. After a great Siddha attains Nirvana, he is often remembered as a star constellation as per ancient Tamil custom. A group of bright stars are chosen and they are connected by imagery lines to form a picture. That picture was generally called Orai in Tamil. Why was it named Orai? The word Orai shall be split as Or plus I Orai. Or is actually a shorter form of the word Ormai which means unifying the dots as one entity. I means exclamation sound. I in Tamil meaning beauty. Hence Orai means unifying the dots to form a chosen beautiful picture. Shiva was the first Siddha of the world to be linked with a star constellation grouped as Orai. The word Ore is a synonym of Zodiac and Zodiac is also a Tamil word as we shall see it later. Hence, Ore is a general name of any Zodiac. Shiva was called Oreon as there was only one Ore at the time and it represented him as it was created for him. Grammatically, the word Oreon means the one who possesses the Ore. It is this word Oreon that gave rise to the word Orion and the constellation in its name. Oreon, Orion. Oreon, Orion. Orion, Orion. This is the etymological origin of the word Orion. The word Horus is also actually a deformed word from Ore of Tamil. Ore, Hore, Horus. Ore also deformed as Ore, Haurai, 
Havar, just like Kumaran defaults as Gaumaran. Havar, meaning a measurement of time, evolved out of Tamil Ori, meaning zodiac. As there are 12 zodiacs surrounding the earth, like Taurus, Scorpion, etc., there are 12 hours in the night and 12 hours in the day. Thus, crossing of each zodiac takes 2 hours, making 24 hours a day. Now, everything is falling in place. Shiva, the human Siddha was having the third eye, the mind's eye, the eye of wisdom. Shiva was called Orion posthumously and this led to the word Orion in the West. It was this Orion which deformed to Horus and represented a mythological character in Egypt. Horus was the first ancient national deity of Egypt. In Tamil culture also, Shiva was the Adinada meaning ancient leader, the first Siddha of Tamils. This way also the Horus represents Shiva of Egypt. Hence, the eye symbol of Horus of Egypt is nothing but the third eye of Shiva. By this etymological analysis, we infer that Tamil civilization predates the Egyptian civilization. I have said zodiac is a Tamil word. Wari means connecting the dots, here the stars, to form a beautiful picture. It can be differently worded that instead of the words connecting the dots, we shall be using the word decorate using the dots to form a beautiful picture. The word decorate means sodi in Tamil. Sodi would phonetically deform to zodi. Hence, sodi, zodi, zodiac means the picture that was decorated, of course, with the stars. We shall see now how the Orion constellation is called in Tamil itself. We have seen that this constellation took the general name of the zodiac as it was the first zodiac which was called Ori. To differentiate it from the general name, they prefixed the word Adi which means ancient. Hence, the zodiac was called Adi plus Ori, Adi Ori, Adi Rai. Hence, the Tamil name equivalent of Orion is called Adi Rai. Since Shiva means great divinity, this word is often prefixed with another word of merit called Thiru and hence it is called Thiru plus Adi Rai, Thiru Adi Rai. Hence, Thiru Adi Rai is the name of the constellation in Tamil that refers to Shiva which is called Orion in the West and both these names evolved from the same Tamil word called Ori. We have seen that the Egyptian mythology and religion is a distorted form of ancient Tamil spirituality called Asivaham. When I treat Mayan spirituality, which is a very ancient spirituality of the world, it would be similarly established that Mayan spirituality originated from Asivagam of Tamils as Mayans too were Tamils in the ancient past. We have established in the video that Horus is the representation of Shiva in Egypt and the words Horus and Hava originated from Tamil word called Ore, a synonym of Zodiac in Tamil. The word Orion also evolved from Tamil word Ore, meaning Zodiac and it represents Shiva. The red or yellow disc on the head of Egyptian gods do not represent sun and they are not to be called solar deities. Those discs represent Kundalini Chakra and the snakes around those discs and on the heads of the pharaohs are Kundalini snakes only and represent the spiritual power of the pharaohs. The ancient Egyptians were Tamils and they migrated there with the wisdom of Lemurian Tamils. Following this video, I am publishing a video called Surprising Facts on Kundalini Yoga. And in fact, this video is a precursor to the Kundalini video. The Egyptologists should watch my videos, Vinayaka worship a great mystery solved and the great Mariaman mystery solved videos which are indispensable when researching the world history. <laughs>